Good evening. Welcome to my live. We're going to be talking this evening about how to improve your golf. Um, got any questions you want to ask during the live? I've got the live chat on in front of me here, so absolutely feel free to join in with the live chat, and I will try and keep my eye on that as we get through the subjects tonight. Subject, how to improve your golf. So how to play your best golf. All built around this question I got from David Simmons. Great question from David Simmons asking uh, when you were playing your best golf what did it, what made it so good able to practice equipment mindset not filming short game or something else so we're going to take a look at these interesting subjects break them down hopefully you can learn and take some of these ideas to the golf course and start playing some better golf yourself should be a fun one Okay, so let's start with practice from David's question. So we're going to start here with the idea of practice. The fact that I used to practice more to now probably practice, or not probably, considerably practicing loads less. Um, how big of impact does that have on my game? Well, yes, that's an absolute tick. Um, practice is something I miss. And also don't, which I'll talk about as we go down through the other subjects. Um, it's, I was someone who needed to practice a lot. And I think this is so person centric. This is so golfer set, uh, kind of centric. So for me, having to practice, having to hit lots of shots, having to really work on my game was something that I had to do going into events. So I wanted to make sure I'd hit enough golf balls. So that's kind of block practice, repeat, repeat, working on my swing, those kind of ideas. While at the same time, I wanted to feel like I had enough competitive rounds. So a bit of a slow start or the year and then got going as the year went on. I liked to have that kind of database of performances building up in my uh, mind as I played in more competition. And I also liked to play a lot. So it was a combination of playing a lot of golf practicing so block practice practicing hitting balls like you would at the range those kinds of and playing in competitive golf so yeah absolutely i see practice as a huge part for lots of people for trying to get their uh, golf better trying to work out in the time you've got if you should be block practicing so repeat 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 compared to playing compared to actually competing I, I, I would say a lot of golfers could do a lot of good doing a lot more playing and creative play than too much block. But there's a time and place for both. If you're learning new skills in your swing, block practice has its part. But I do see a lot of golfers get lost in block practicing and maybe not getting out and doing those two or three holes, that kind of idea as well. So definitely a mixture and finding what worked for you. For me, it was all of them. If I, if I missed one of them, I felt like I wasn't ready to play and I wouldn't play my best. So before we go on to the next category, if you're not a subscriber here, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. If you want to see more lives, hit that thumbs up button as well and give the bell icon a ring. If you want to see more lives and take part in more lives, everyone in the uh, chat here, good evening. Um, how do we practice during this situation at the moment? AD White, it's very tricky. These tips and ideas are built much more for people not in lockdown for when you get out there playing. But hopefully you can use the ideas of block practice or not, like we've just talked about. If you think about if you are practicing in your garden chipping, you want to randomize as well as block. And that would be as close as you get to or even compete with family members if you can. And even FaceTime a friend and do a few games with them, which will give you that kind of unrandomized or the randomized practice as well as you doing the block in your own kind of time. Now, the next question um, that David was asking here in his brilliant question, one of the best questions I've actually think I've ever had on Twitter. What about equipment? What difference does equipment make? Obviously, using past equipment to modern equipment. Um, I would say it's relative. So I wouldn't say I'm any better. I play courses now that I shoot better. I shot better scores on when I was younger, living in Devon. That I'm back living in now as an adult. Um, and that's from similar tees and using old ball and old equipment. My skill sets have changed. I'm definitely hitting in different spots. Some of those courses are considerably shorter. 
than I ever remember them being. And obviously all of that to do with the modern equipment and you've got so many options. But I think what I always did do and still do with my equipment is I made sure I no one in the field of golfers I was playing with particularly had any advantage with the equipment. I think there's your real gains or not in equipment. I do see some amateurs leaving gaping holes in their equipment, maybe not having the right combination of wedges, totally not understanding bounce is a common one, having lofts and lies on their clubs that encourage poor deliveries, those kind of ideas. So making sure you get your equipment fitted is a massive kind of where I said I needed to practice and make sure I was doing the right amounts of different sets of practice to make me feel ready to play if I didn't have my bag in the right place as well I wouldn't feel ready to play uh, not as much as the practice but it would be a part so making sure you have equipment that isn't giving anyone else the edge so if you're using a driver from 20 years ago that can be improved if you've got irons that aren't fit for you and you don't understand why one iron always goes in one direction compared to another you're going to lose some ground on the next player who does understand and got the lie built around every club, those kind of things. Actually got a video coming on how to buy your best irons and your best drivers coming. And if you want to see that, maybe post in the comments down below. While you're down there, make sure, remember, hit that subscribe button. I can see loads of you in this evening. Welcome everybody in the chat room. But only seeing 53 thumbs up, hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already. If you want to see more lives and share... Um, I'll try and share as much info as I can with you so when we do get out there playing you can really get stuck in and playing your best next one on David's question let's talk about mindset now this one for me is the biggest one just in my notes here mindset I've written yes yes and yes mindset is everything so wanting to improve and having the desire to improve, having the desire to get better, having the desire to try and beat the people that I would be competing against was everything. That is what would drive me to practice more. That is what would drive me to really want to make sure my equipment was in the exact place I wanted it to be. I see it in lessons. I see it in amateur golfers. You see lessons who do have that desire, that wanting to improve with no barriers. And you often see them progressing far quicker than you do others who think maybe that just coming for the lesson is the answer. I'll go for a lesson because that fixes me. For me, I was going to a lesson to find out information. I was going to use that information, practice it, train it, put it in competition, put it on the course, put it in block practice, go back to my coach. That isn't working, this is working, that's brilliant, that's awful. Another lesson, same procedure. It was a real desire and wanting to want to understand how to play my best golf. And that's the biggest one, the mindset. My mindset now is about going to amazing places in the world. It's about providing for my family. It's about playing with my friends. It's not about, you know, playing with some random person who wants to do a collab because that's what YouTube tells you to do. It's like, for me, golf and the enjoyment used to be about wanting to improve. It used to be about that desire. It's now more a little bit about sustaining, but it's more about, for me, wanting to have fun, wanting to see great places around the world, working with people like Your Golf Travel, um, and going around the world with Matt and Rory and Dan and whoever. It, that's what it's more about for me now. Um, so that's where if I wanted to play my best golf now, I'd severely have to change my life, how I work and what I want for my life. So I think there's a really important message um, in that for lots of people trying to work out what a golfer's goals are sometimes when they come for a lesson is quite tricky the goals can be quite mixed up their goals aren't always maybe focused in a position where you think they can obtain those goals with the time they've got with the mindset they've got from how angry they get when they play to how much they hate playing bad to how competitive they are all those things so really taking a look at yourself of what you want and where your mindset wants to be 
could be a big one in helping you play your best golf. Because for me, playing my best golf at the moment is not now scoring as low as I could, which it was when I wanted to compete. It's about having a lot of fun and capturing the best content I can that makes me feel happy and proud to put it out there on the internet. So again, mindset for me, I think, is the biggest one. If you're a golfer who wants to improve, if you want to get better, the desire to want to do that, you it, golf's all-consuming and tough. You need to have a strong, strong desire. Next question, not filming. Now, this is an interesting category, so not filming for me or filming. And I think um, this is an interesting one because... I, filming when we play, even though the way we play it, and I think the way we are, because we're relaxed with each other, and I think the way we move the camera around between the groups, it's quite seamless, and it's quite raw the way it's shot, not really produ any production, there's no edits, You, we every shot we hit, you see, we expose like a nerve, <laughs> our good and awful shots. Um, the camera gives me a different mindset. And it gives me one that makes me enjoy golf again. Because as a coach, as a full-time player, then going to a coach and then falling out of love with actually just playing golf all the time because it became my job, the camera, the filming, has allowed me to fall back in love with everything that golf provides me um, and provides my working life now. Um, so the filming part definitely makes me a worse golfer because I'm too busy researching what cameras I should use, how to get the audio better, what mic arm I should use, how to do live production any better. All these things are not easy for a dumb golf pro like me. Um, so that's where I get a different kick from playing now. I now try and, uh, it's enjoying the production, enjoying the place, enjoying the people I get to go with. So it's very different. And I do think the audience don't really see that sometimes. They do just see us as them out on the golf course. But again, that's the mindset. That goes back to the mindset for me. My mindset is arguably in a much better place now that allows me to play better golf because I'm enjoying myself more. It's not always about shooting that lowest score. The amount of lessons I see built or really beat themselves up because they play bad. And I think, look, you've got two kids, a wife, you play, you practice once a week for about 40 minutes and then you go and compete in a tournament. Like, you might need to bring those expectations down just a fraction. Um, let's have a quick dive into the comments, shall we? On the old live chat here. Hello from Bonnie Scotland, Mark. Hurry up and come back to us. Absolutely, William. I love playing golf in Scotland. Um, what else have we got? Do you still provide lessons, Mark? Yes, I do. I have uh, a very small catchment of students. And if you want to look at getting lessons from me, I will advertise when there is a spot. Um, potential best tips and tricks videos for beginners such as basic swing tactics or area of focus on Ross Pitcher. Um, I've got a basic golf swing video maybe check that one out um, I will do more on that in a longer video I think it's a good question and one that we could um, really uh, cover a lot more so the next question that was asked by David was could my short game improve my short game and your short games, which you're all getting forced to practice at the moment, absolutely is an area for me that could improve subject or compared to where it used to be. Again, when my mindset was in a different place and that I practiced considerably more, that's where my short game was where it was. Um, so I don't think it would take me that much time to get my short game back to where I would want it. If my mindset was not around filming, it was about improving. And if my then that drove me to practice the amount I need to get my short game to the level it was. Um, so yes, I think it's a massive pace for me to improve, but it's, I think it's actually quite funny for the video sometimes. And I really like the journey that I go on with my short game and you coming along with it as a golf coach. What you watching me battle and struggle with it, I mean, it makes me a better short game coach. It makes me understand both sides of the coin. Um, from someone who had a very tidy short game as a younger person without thinking about it to now someone who has a very below average short game uh, with the odd fleeting bit of decentness but generally it's average and then a lot of the time it's really poor. Um, so I love you coming on the journey with me because I think it just shows 
the journey of learning for so many people, which I kind of am exposing as I go. And I've got no excuse for my short game to be bad because, again, if the mindset was in the right place, this is my garden outside, I can chip every day. But again, for that to happen, my mindset would need to be absolutely in the right place. Um, and I would need to be not spending so much time trying to make videos and publish videos and social platforms produce those. For you guys and girls at home, um, you absolutely can gain from improving your short games, but you can also in gain by improving every part of your game. And for most people, amateur golfers, that I do strokes games with, and Matt does it with his journey students, Short game generally isn't the area the bigger holes are. Sometimes the quicker fixes are there, but the bigger leaks are often in the 200 yards, uh, 180 to 200 plus approach play and off the tee. Um, that old cliche of uh, uh, drive for show, putt for dough, unfortunately still flies around, but it, it harms so many more than it absolute, than it actually helps. It, it, it is for many people very much a um, big old cliche. So let's do a little roundup for you if you want to get your golf better, which we all do. You want to improve, you want to play your best golf before we do a few comments just to finish. Practice, yes, upping your practice if possible. Massive influencer for most people on helping them play better. There's always examples, uh, uh, exemptions to that. I, I remember playing with guys and one of them who's a great tour player who didn't really ever practice, wasn't a practicer. I think Montgomery is another one. I didn't play with Montgomery, but another one who was quite famous for not really ever going out there and practicing. Didn't even know where the practice area was on certain places. I think I remember stories of saying, you know, he went to got to the final round of a major and he didn't even know where the practice ground was. Um, but then finding out what practice works for you is key. So many people use block. Using block practice isn't always the answer. And for lots of my students, Again, I say this time and time again, I get them in the studio, we're doing block practice, I can make them do anything if I shout enough at them. We go out on the golf course after hitting loads of great shots inside, you give them a side lie, a downhill lie, a six iron rather than their eight iron that they're really comfortable with, and you see it just fall apart straight away. So working out your practice from block to random to playing, all those kind of things, massive equipment. Yes, there are holes in people's equipment. Getting custom fit is huge and can help. But it's one of the smaller percentage that the equipment is about what are you giving away to your opponents you know if you're using the old torbellata still you're giving 30 yards away if you're using a driver from 20 years ago you're giving a lot of yards away if you're using a wedge that's always too far too much upright for you and you pull a few or even push a few because you overcompensate that's something that can easily be fixed but it's going to be a small percentage but it's something that can still be fixed mindset's the biggest one Working out what you want to improve, play your best golf. Is it when you're having fun that you play your best golf? Is it when you play more with your mates? Is it that you choose where you play? Is it that you don't? You like playing with random people. Getting that mindset so you are driven to practice and driven to get your equipment is huge. And for me, definitely the biggest one. And for lots of my students, the filming obviously only applies for me. And short game definitely holds in players short games. But nowhere near a bigger holes as people think compared to the holes that we see in their long game. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps. A few comments just to finish, shall we, as we go out of tonight's vlog. Hopefully there's some good information in there that can help you. What's block practice, Will Bateman? Block practice, Will, is, so let's say you get 100 balls and you're just working on the same thing 100 times. Bang, bang, bang. You're block practicing. You're like drilling the same thing over and over and over again. Compared to randomized would be, I'm going to try and do this swing for hitting them out to the right hand target to the left hand target downwind into the wind side slopes you're going to mix it up randomize it and make it a little bit more similar to what you're going to be thrown at or what's going to be thrown at you when you get on the golf course block practice has its place but um it also can i see lots of people doing block practice and actually not going forward from it um todd bassett what's your thoughts on one length irons todd so if we refer to equipment i think there are small gains to be had in there but there are gains subject to how many holes you have in your equipment. Um, it's something you've got to test. My testing over the years, I see no advantage over one length irons, but I see no disadvantage. But I see it playing into people's mindsets massively. 
and I would never tell someone who wants them, likes them, says they enjoy them, if their numbers are decent compared to a standard set, their mindset's built around one length and they want them, treat yourself, go for them. Um, Chris Bray, thanks for all the videos. Look forward to the videos. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for watching. Two hats, one, one sock. Will we ever see it again? Jamie Carlisle, hopefully. If we'll see it again on camera, don't know. But that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? And there's my mindset. That's really going back to that mindset, isn't it? All right, we're playing for fun. We're not. If I was playing to improve, I'd have spent that time on the range or going and playing that nine-hole course, really trying to work on my short game. But I went out and had a lot of fun with my friends. Hope that helps. Post comments down below. If you're not subscribed already, remember, hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more lives, we are all locked up for a long time, possibly. If you want to see more lives, hit that like button, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and hit that bell to let me know you do want more of these, and um, I will absolutely work on them. Thanks for watching, as always. Have a good evening. On the way out, thumbs up button for me. I can see how many of you are in here. I can see the thumbs up. And at the moment, it's half. Come on, let's hit some thumbs up. Thanks for watching, everybody.